Hello guys, how are you getting on? You're very welcome to episode 2 of The Verdict. So, Premier League action. Let's get straight into it. It's been quite the weekend. Starting off with today's games then. And starting off at the Hawthorns in the Midlands where West Bromwich Albion hosted uh, Manchester United. And a 2-1 win for United to add on to their 1-0 uh, win over Bournemouth during the week uh, following the defeat in the Manchester Derby. And two goals and two for Romelu Lukaku. And quite convenient that he scored two since I exposed him last week. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, goal for Lukaku today again. And similar to the, against Bournemouth during the week, there was no celebration from him. Um, I mean, that could be for a number of things. It could be for the fact that he's seen my video last week and cried for the whole week since then. No, no, that's probably not it. Could be the fact that he only scores against shite teams, or could be the fact that he's a terrible first touch. God, my banter is flowing today. Oh, no, I, I, I can't, I can't really criticise someone on their first touch, can I? It's just, it's just like, it's just like wrong. This is wrong. No, I definitely can't. Moving on to the second game that happened today, and that was Liverpool beating Bournemouth four 0 And I'm not a Liverpool fan, obviously, but. Um, they're, I'd say they're one of the most frustrating teams to be a fan of because they can they, they show today how good they can be uh, with that front three that they had today Mane wasn't even in the squad I can only assume that he was injured but Firmino, Salah and Coutinho all on the score sheet as they cruise to a 4-0 victory over Bournemouth at the Vitality Stadium and this is the frustrating thing because Liverpool are so good going forward but are so dodgy at the back and I think it's because of their defence that they're not up beside Man City at the top of the table because if they had a good defence they would be um, the balance of the team isn't very good but um, they played very well today I can't really say one player that played badly today uh, special mentions for me obviously the front three were superb again and uh, Oxley chamberlain was very good today I was very impressed with him and Andy Robertson at left back why has it taken Klopp so long to play this fella he like he signed him in the summer from Hull, and he's played a bit. He's played a bit part role in fairness, and he's a far better defender than Moreno. And people, the reason Moreno gets the plaudits in the first place is probably is because of his ability to go forward. But Robertson was up and down that left wing today, and he was fucking brilliant. I have to say. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on to Saturday's games now, and Burnley and Arsenal both, uh, even for a short time, moved ahead of Liverpool in the table. Uh, Arsenal beat Newcastle by one goal to nil. A goal scored by Mesut Ozil. Absolutely unbelievable strike. It's coming down from the sky. He meets it perfectly with the left volley. And no chance for Rob Elliott in the Newcastle goal. There's a lot of problems at Newcastle at the minute, I feel. Um, you know, there's a lot of... I wouldn't say confusion, but unrest over the whole Mike Ashley situation. I think they need to get the club sold as quick as possible. And some money needs to start coming in. Or else it could result in Rafa Benitez walking and who could blame him? Uh, you know, he needs a huge, huge investment in the uh, January window. He needs the money to do it. Um, I don't think he can be blamed in any way for the way Newcastle are playing this season. But, um, yeah, they slumped to another defeat and Arsenal did move up to fourth prematurely. But as the table stands at the minute, are back down to fifth. Now moving on to Chelsea then, they've bounced back from the defeat of West Ham last week in the perfect way with two wins in two to beat Huddersfield 3-1 during the week and yesterday narrowly beating Southampton 1-0 at Stamford Bridge but a deserving win. A Marcus Alonso long range free kick enough to win the spoils for us on the day so happy days there. Uh, we stayed third and were level on points with Man United in second um, but they now moved back three points ahead of us but as long as we keep the pace for United, I think when we do meet them again at Old Trafford later on in the season, we can beat them. Um, we just need to keep winning um, games we should be winning. Like the Southampton game yesterday was an, an easy win. And the teams that we've lost, the likes of Burnley, the likes of Palace, West Ham, all should have been wins, easy wins. And if we'd won them kind of games and picked up three points in areas we haven't, which we should have this season, we'd definitely be up there alongside Man City, no doubt. I'm not saying we're near their quality, but uh, you know we should be up nearer to them, and I think the title is won at this stage. Speaking of Manchester City, 
What a team they are. They brushed Tottenham aside yesterday, beating them 4-1 at the Etihad. Um, they moved 14 points clear, but are now back to only 11 points clear. Um, unbelievable. What a team that is. Pep Guardiola's come in, and he's he has them playing his way. Uh, and there are a lot of comparisons being made at the minute to his old Barcelona teams um, when he won the Champions League with them twice. And countless league titles as well. <coughs> but they're just playing unbelievable stuff at the minute. I mean, when you have when you have players like Silva, De Bruyne, Aguero, Jesus, Sterling, Sané, all these attacking players, you know, it's bound to have, similar to Liverpool. They're bound to score goals. But I think they have the defenders and the defence defensive tactics to um, withstand pressure as well when they are tested and Edison is a wonderful keeper as well um, now as I mentioned now 11 points clear Manchester City once again and once again retaining that 11 point gap and uh, yeah they look unstoppable will they go the whole season unbeaten I mean who's going to stop them looking at it at the minute uh, like you look at all the top teams they've beaten or top teams uh, they've beaten Man United, beaten Chelsea, uh, beaten Liverpool, beaten Liverpool well actually, and now they've beaten Tottenham. I don't think they've played Arsenal yet, but are they classified as a top team? I said, no, there, there, there. Shut your mouth! Hey. Do you know what I mean? Um, as for Spurs, well, they're a bit shit, aren't they? Love you. Thank you, thank you. And they slumped to another defeat against the top six sides. They've actually lost to every single top six side apart from Liverpool this season, and Liverpool have this man so kind of hard <laughs> and no 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 we won't we won't slag Lovren today he regained some sort of respect with a, a headed goal today so all is forgiven all is forgotten for him uh, moving on to the other games then and Crystal Palace claimed a massive win a 3-0 win over Leicester and a massive scalp really because uh, Leicester have been back on the charge recently the likes of Mares and Vardy are striking again like they were uh, the season they won the title um, so a really, really good performance for Crystal Palace. Benteke looked back to his best as well. Goal and assist for him. Uh, setting up Zaha for the second and Bakary Sacco getting the third to wrap up the game for them. Um, a shock result really, but um, I think Claude Puel's game management and tactics came very much into question in that game. But look, um, big, big win for Palace, taking them away from the relegation zone. Speaking of uh, big wins for relegation candidates, West Ham claimed a massive win away at uh, Stoke yesterday. Marco Arnautovic <coughs> scoring for the second time in two weeks. He scored against us last week and now scored against his former team Stoke yesterday. And I think it's fair to say he uh, didn't hold back with the celebrations. Cheers, Marco. Yeah, but Stoke looking real trouble at the minute. I mentioned last week um, about them and Mark Hughes at the minute, how he could be in trouble uh, if they were to get a few more... Uh, you know, bad results, and this is one of them. Uh, at home, for your own fans as well, West Ham looked looked quite good. And you know, David Moyes, <laughs> we've slagged him in the past, but he's he, he's doing the business at the minute. He's got a couple of good results now. Beat us last week. Good draw against Arsenal in midweek, and um, yeah, very very good win there last night as well. So um, things look on the up for them. And in the last two games of Saturday, Burnley and Brighton played out what seemed to be a bit of a bore of a nil-all draw, to be honest. I was watching the highlights this morning and flicking through all the games, you know, as you do, seeing the Burnley-Brighton game and was thinking, do I, do I really want to watch the highlights to this? I didn't, so I can't really say too much about the game, but I can only presume it wasn't great stuff. Burnley stay uh, within the top six, though, but they're doing unbelievable stuff. Um, I think I mentioned it in my last video, um, I gave Sean Dyche huge, amount, huge amounts of uh, praise um, for the way his Burnley team have gone about their way this season. <coughs> um, playing very well and grinded out a nil-all draw with Brighton there yesterday. So, you know, another point on the board to keep them going. And the last game that happened yesterday was Huddersfield, who continued to shock us all, I think. Uh, big, big win for them. I've been very, very impressed with Marco Silva and Watford this season, but... Um, big, big result for Huddersfield yesterday. Aaron Moy grabbing two. Uh, De Poitra on the score sheet as well. Uh, Troy Deeney sent off, but uh, the highlight of the game, I know Watford lost, but what a strike by Abdullah Decora. He's well able to strike a ball. 
And you know, I've I underestimated Watford this season, but they, I mean, obviously they weren't at their best yesterday, but they've they've looked good this season. And <coughs> so Huddersfield, another team that everyone underestimated and put down, but look, sometimes it's the worst teams that can surprise you. Worst teams on paper, that is. Um, but yeah, big big win for Huddersfield, especially away from home as well. Um, bouncing back from the defeat to Chelsea in midweek. There is a game tomorrow. Swansea take on uh, Everton in the Monday Night Football. Um, Swansea rooted to the bottom of the table. And Everton are on the rise at the minute under Sam Allardyce. He's made a massive impact since he's came in. Um, and Wayne Rooney looks back to himself, doesn't he? Um, I've seen a stat there the other day that only Kane, Salah and someone else. It might have been Aguero or Jesus or someone have scored more goals than Rooney this season. So, uh, looking like a bit of a Wayne Rooney from old, but let's not get carried away. But, uh, yeah, that's tomorrow night. <coughs> it should be interesting. Um, a lot of big results for the lower down teams, like the Palace and West Ham, claiming massive wins yesterday. So, Swansea need to respond. They're rooted to the bottom of the table. They need to start picking up wins, especially at home. So... We'll see how it goes. Well, that concludes episode two of The Verdict, and I hope you guys did enjoy it. Can we hit 10 likes on this video? I think we can. Let's try and hit 10 likes, and uh, yeah, if you can, that'll mean a massive amount to me. Yeah, leave a like if you did enjoy, subscribe if you are new, and I will catch you later. Peace.